Hi, I'm Jenna, and this is episode 93. And it was funny because I was getting ready for this episode today. I'm like, I'm going to call it Lumberjane. Because <laughs> uh, my I got these really cute plaid shirts at Old Navy. And they say they're flannel, but anybody watching for a really long time or has gone back recently and watched the older ones knows I don't like the feel of flannel. But they're not. They're just soft cotton. But anyways, I was joking with my husband. I'm like, look, I'm looking like a Lumberjane. He's like, you mean a lumberjack? I'm like, I don't have the right equipment to be a lumberjack. <laughs> so I'm a lumberjane. <laughs> so uh, hello and welcome to all new viewers. Um, just being silly. And um, <laughs> all returning viewers. Um, it's just been one of those days. I've been kind of feeling a little quirky. So not all bad, right? Um, okay, to business real quick with knit alongs. Um, we have, what, a week and a half left on our, uh, breakaway knit along. So, if you're new, or you need a reminder, it's the breakaway cowl. This one's knit in the Leading Men Fiber Arts box office base in the Perfection colorway. And it's a tealy blue. I love this colorway. Like, love, 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 love it. Now, I know this is Steve's favorite color. And that's why it's called Perfection, because it's like his perfect color. And I'm like, oh, it's quickly becoming my favorite colorway, too. <laughs> no, I just, I really, really do love the color. And I love their box office base. It's so soft and squishy. So, break away, cowl. I wear mine all the time, every day almost. Because it's cold here now in northeast Ohio. So, yay. Like I said, week and a half left. Um... And I love seeing the entries. It's super, super fun. So you have until November 30th. I think there's only 30 days in November. I say that like every week. And I always think, I'm going to look at a calendar. and I'm going to double check. And I don't. So, oh, I love it. It's so squishy. And then, um, I wasn't going to do a knit along for December with the exception of the advent calendar scarf. Now, I know you're going, oh my god, a knit along for the advent calendar scarf? It's an informal knit along. It's like an unofficial knit along. It's just for fun because I've had other people say, I really, really want to do it. And, and the group for the official knit along, because they finally opened the group, um, I can't remember if it was like over the weekend or early this week. They finally opened the group, and it's Advent Calendar Scarf 2013. It is in um, English and German. And so there's two threads. There's a German thread and an English thread for each day, and it, it kind of moves fast. So I'm just going to open like an, a knit-along thread where you can chatter and post pictures. If you don't want to be spoiled, don't look in the thread unless if you've like stayed caught up, because I'm hoping to keep caught up and I will post pictures. And, um, like I said, totally just unofficial, just for fun, if you decide to try to do it. Um, but then, because of Francis the Sock-Wearing Fox being released last week, which, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for all the love you have given Francis. It has been so exciting and amazing, and, and I'm glad so many people love her as much as I do. So... I got so many PMs and messages in my group and other groups about doing a knit along. And I totally was not going to do a knit along for Francis. I know, right? Shocking. Um, just because it's the holidays and it's crazy. And what I've decided to do is we are going to do a knit along and it is going to run December and January. So you will have two months for Francis. Now we're still going to do the sprig knit along in January and February. So you can do both, you can do one or the other, because not everybody does toys, or not everybody does garments. Um, I've never done a garment knit along, so I'm quite excited about it. Um, so, two months, because some people want to make them for the holidays, and some people don't feel they'll have time before the holidays to knit one, and some people are talking about knitting them for, like, spouses or significant others, um knitting a little fox and maybe making or finding a card that says, you know, something about their significant other being foxy. So I thought it was really cute. So that's coming up, like I said, December and January. 
You can knit as many of them as you like. Just give each one its own thread. You can use whatever yarn you like. Um, you know, my only thing is it just has to be this pattern. So super excited. Francis is excited too. Be like, do, 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 do. <laughs> um, so like I said, unofficial advent calendar knit along in December. Or, you know, it's just going to be a thread. You can keep it going if you don't finish it up by Christmas. You know, if you keep working on it into it, you can keep posting stuff. That's fine with me. Um, there's no prizes for that. And then Francis the Fox, December and January. And Caterpillar Designs has generously donated a set of fox stitch markers for that knit along. And I will probably gift the pattern. And then... Um, January and February is the Sprig cardigan. So we're pretty set for knit-alongs for the next three months. <laughs> it's crazy they're going to overlap a little, but like I said, you can do both. You can do one or the other. You can do none of them. That's okay, too. <laughs> so, like I said, okay, that's it for knit-alongs, and we can now move in to finished objects, because I have finished objects. So I'm trying to get Christmas gifts done. So I did get a hat, well, two hats done. Um, this one's for my one son. His coat is orange and gray. So that's what this is. It's orange and gray. And it's not quite as searing of a gray. I'm getting a glare in from the window. I guess I should have angled the blinds a little different. But this is the Turn a Square pattern by Jared Flood. And it's probably my all-time favorite hat pattern. Because I've knit it with stripes like the pattern calls for. I've knitted it with variegated, just omitting the stripes. You could knit it solid, and I just think it's a well-fitting hat. I'll put it on. I can't say I can pull off bright orange. <laughs> but, why not? And it just, I think it fits so good. It covers my ears, it hits my eyebrows, which is where I like my hats to hit. Um, it's a little snug on me, which is good, because my son has a smaller head than I. But... My favorite hat pattern, and it's free. It's free on Ravelry, and it's turn a square. Turn a square. Hopefully my hair's not too messy. And then, as I said, I know another one. So my other son's coat, it's navy blue. I don't know, it might look a little black to you guys, but it's navy blue and like a chartreuse green. Same pattern, turn a square. Both hats were knit out of Cascade 220 Superwash. So this one is, I think it's just called gray, gray and blaze, which is the orange, and then navy and citron is the green. I'll try this one on too, why not? I like this one, because I love this color of green. Not too bad, huh? And then, so those are both gifts, so super excited to get those gifts out of the way. And then I have one other gift. I knit a breakaway cowl and I have not blocked it. I've woven in the ends but I do not cut my ends until after I block it because I have found sometimes if I cut the ends and then block it when I block it the tail sticks out too much or so I just prefer to weave in the ends then block then trim. So this is the grinning gargoyle. It is a fingering weight held double and it is the color I called Signature Red. And it is 50, I think it's a 50-50 silk and merino. Um, but, and I played Total Yarn Chicken. Like, I knew it was going to be super close. After weaving in the ends, I literally have like an inch, maybe an inch and a half of yarn. Like, I had maybe four, four inches left I was sweating it because I held the yarn double and I worked from both ends of the skein so I worked from the middle of the cake and the outside and just held them together and as I kept seeing this loop getting closer and closer I'm like oh my goodness like it's it's gonna be close now if I I didn't leave this tail too long so but I did the full pattern all six repeats the bind off and it is this is for my mom so I had made my mom a moon dance shawl out of the exact same yarn and I had so much left over and this is not a color I can really wear my hair is too too orange I'll put it on and I swear this 
is a longer cowl than the other ones I've made. It just must be the yarn, but the yarn is so soft. So I thought that would be nice. My mother looks freaking gorgeous in deep reds. And um, I thought she'd like that. So three Christmas gifts down. Way too many more to go. So then I have some works in progress and this one was kind of a fail. If you follow me on Instagram, you saw it. It is one lonely, seamless, Saloma slipper. So you go and you stick your foot in it and it's supposed to stretch and it does not stretch that much. And I followed the pattern, followed the size because the size is a, not a shoe size but the foot size, like inches of the foot. Now, um, Susan, who originally had this pattern that her grandma Salomas had handed down, um, she didn't seam up like Kitchener stitch the front here, and I did because the pattern said to. And my daughter tried these on because she has the same size foot as my sister-in-law, and she said it was so tight it hurt. So I'm going to try to go in and take this Kitchener stitch out because I have a pair that Susan actually made me because she's my friend, and I love it. I wear them all the time. And they fit great. So I'm going to take this out and see if that helps and see if it's more comfortable. Because if that's more comfortable and they actually fit my daughter, my daughter can fit her foot in it, um, then I'll make the other one. And if not, it's it's going to be scrapped. So. Oh, and it was knit um, out of, oh, what's it called? Uh, Vanna's Choice in the ducky colorway. It's Vanna's Choice Baby, but it's not baby yarn. It's just like baby colors. But my sister-in-law really likes yellow and I thought she'd really like this and it was in my stash. Trying to use trying to use up that stash. And um, so that's why I picked it. Like I said, ducky. I like it. It's such a cheerful yellow. Um, my other works in progress because I am a firm believer of always having socks on the needles because sometimes you don't have any other projects that you can just take somewhere. So I wound up and divided my Desert Vista Dye Works in the DVD logo colorway which I love it so much. Just gorgeous colors. My yarn's a little tangled there. So I am making afterthought heel socks because it's what I like to make with my stripes and it fits me good. I knit them on size twos. So there's the colorway. And so I'm to the point where I need to put the scrap yarn in for this sock. So I put it away and I'm working on the leg now of the second sock. Oh, I'm like mid-row. <laughs> So, because my son had a doctor's appointment last week, he was sick, so I worked on him there, and I worked on him in the car, and at the pharmacy, and all that other, any, like, free minute I had, because at the moment I didn't have anything that didn't need a real pattern, or that I could work on in front of the kids, because, you know, the hats, they're Christmas gifts, and I want to make matching mittens, and I can't work on it in front of them, so, perfect on-the-go project. And then, let's see what else am I working on. I started, I, I should have started this a long time ago. Like when I first got the yarn, I don't know, a couple weeks ago? Two, three weeks ago? God, time goes so fast, I really can't remember. So, the yarn is Leading Men Fiber Arts Ghost Light, which is a lace weight. And it is the Perfection colorway because I really, really love it. And it's funny because this is the lace weight. And, oh, I, don't, I didn't put the ball band in, or the card in there. I cannot remember if it's just 100% wool or if it's a wool silk mix. I'm thinking it's just 100% wool. And Steve, I apologize. I should have stuck the card in the bag, but it's out on my desk. Um... But like I said, it's the Ghost Light Base, which is worsted weight, or <laughs> lace weight. When you compare it to the worsted weight, you can see the the worsted weight definitely is like a bit darker. Because, you know, the dyes just diff take it, or the yarns take the dyes different. Getting all tongue-tied here. Um, so I always think it's fun to see the difference, how the same dye 
just looks a little different. So this just looks a little lighter. Still gorgeous. Love the color. Um, and then I was sitting in my knitting chair, and it kind of matches this chair behind me. Almost. It's a little brighter. But it's a perfect match for my phone case. <laughs> so, totally hit the nail on the head with the otter box. <laughs> I'm so obsessed with this color. I, it so reminds me, when I was young, <laughs> or... Um, when I was in school, I don't know, maybe about 5th or 6th grade, since I was like a young preteen and teenager throughout the 90s, my bedroom was painted almost the same color. It might have been a little lighter or hair brighter. Think of like, remember when the Charlotte Hornets used to be in uh, North Carolina? It was North Carolina, not South, right? I think so. Charlotte. Anyways, their colors were teal and purple, and I painted my bedroom um, Charlotte Hornets teal. <laughs> and um, that's totally what it reminds me of. So it's been fun knitting with this yarn because it brings back a lot of really great memories of my younger days. And my mom, oh my god, when I picked that color up, she was like, are you serious? Like, that's what you wanted? I'm like, oh yeah. Had a teal bedroom. Um, so I am knitting, um, Bonnie, B-O-N-N-Y, and it is a Tin Can Knits pattern, and it is from the Handmade in the UK book. Um, I bought the ebook. I think you can get a paperback copy, like a hard copy, but I bought the ebook because there were so many patterns in it I liked, and it was a really good deal, um, for the amount of patterns in it. I think by the time like I added up all the patterns I wanted to knit, it was cheaper just to buy the whole ebook than to buy all the patterns individually. So it's not real exciting right now. This is the body and it's it's scrunched up on the needles and it's not blocked because it'll definitely it's super stretchy. Because I'm like, I'm not that small. <laughs> um so I love I love this lace weight. It's so soft. It's working up so nice. It's gonna be so pretty. So, um, I really can't say a whole lot about the pattern right now. The only thing is, is when you cast it on, you just knit. It's just stockinette at first, and then it goes into a lace panel on the chest. But it rolls, I mean, because they don't have you do anything else but stockinette. And it kind of, it kind of drives me nuts. Like, I kind of wish I would have done something different. But I'm hoping when it blocks out, it won't roll as bad. Like, I know it's supposed to roll a little, because that's how it's written, but it really wants to just roll right up. So I am probably two-thirds of the way of the bottom. And for my size, I'm knitting the medium-large, because there was large, medium-large, and large. So the middle one. Um, it calls for 800 yards of yarn. And usually when a designer gives you... Um, a yardage, usually there's a little wiggle room. Like, you know, they give you an extra so many yards. So this skein of yarn was 850 yards, if I remember correctly. So I am going to go and knit like an extra eight or nine grams worth in the body. I want it a little longer. It's not, I think it's supposed to hit like right at the hip or just above the hip in the pattern. Now it has to be above the hip. At the waist, maybe. I don't know. It looks short. <laughs> and I'm not a very tall person, but I just, I don't want it as short as it's supposed to be. So I'm going to weigh it and really watch it and um, try to add a little bit of length to it. And hopefully not totally jinx myself and not have enough once I go to finish it. <laughs> so, um... Let's see, that's it for works in progress. The only thing is I am getting ready for the advent calendar scarf. We have a week and a half till that starts. So I did go and wind up my yarn. The beautiful just for or what's it called? Just right for Jenna that Heather of Highland Handmaids um, dyed up for me a few months ago. Um, it is in her pin cherry lace, so it is lace and it's merino and silk on a lace weight yarn. So gorgeous. So I have that in there all wound up. Island handmaids. So it is 80% fine merino, 20% tulle.
Tessa Silk, 1100 yards. I got my beads ready, my needle crochet, crochet hook for the beads in my girl cave bag. And I'm still, it's going to be after Thanksgiving when it starts, but I figure you should be thankful every day. So I'm going to keep it in my girl cave bag, my Thanksgiving bag, ready to go. I am excited. I cannot wait. I'm pumped. I did it last year. I'm so worried like this year I'm not going to do it. Like keep up. I mean, I'm going to do it, but I don't know, like the butterflies are setting in. So, okay, um, I was contacted by Cooperative Press, and I was really surprised when I had gotten the message. Um, but I was asked to review doo -doo -doo -doo. Um, come on. my iPad's old and slow, so I have to be a little patient with it, I'm sorry. Anyway, so I was asked to review an ebook, and they gave me a copy for free, and then I get to give a copy away for you. So it is Head to Toe Kids Knit Accessories by Katia Frankel. Okay, I've never done this with my iPad. Hopefully I don't get a glare. Okay, I think we're good. Um, super cute. I was really excited to get gifted this one because I have little kids. So it's really neat because... The table of contents is divided up by head things, neck things, load, hand things, and foot things. So, table of contents. Um, one of my favorite patterns right off the bat that I noticed is called North Northumberland. So it kind of has like a little chevron pattern. Super cute. I don't usually do a lot of color work stuff because I'm just not very good at it, but I feel like I could do this. It's They use two different colors, so it's kind of like a chevron with a line through it. Let's try to get a little closer. And I really like that pattern. I think my boys would really like it especially. Um, and then what I love is at the bottom of the pattern, this doesn't give away the actual pattern. It's just the first page. It gives you all the info, like the sizes, the materials needed. Um, but there's a little button that says Table of Contents. And when you push it, it takes you right back to the Table of Contents. Awesome. Love that feature. And I did open this in iBooks. Um, the other pattern that I really, really liked was um, Bowburn. And it has kind of like, I don't, like some faux cabling. You can really see it on the little girl's head. So, super cute. Um, you know, this is like one of those books where, oh, here's a really good shot of it. Um, I could go and, you know, have my kids go, here, pick out what you like. And there isn't a single pattern in here that I wouldn't mind knitting. So... That, that's helpful because sometimes, you know, the kids are like, I want you to make me that. And you're like, oh, crap, right? So I love that they have um, cowls for kids. I mean, I guess you could take any adult cowl and just size it down. I love this green. I love the green against the gray jacket. Super cute. Love the cute little boy. Um... And then I like, it's checkers, and I think, too, I love the color they used. But I like, like, they call it checkers. Um, I've also, it kind of almost looks like a basket weave, which is something I really like. But yeah, I don't know, I guess I don't always think to make cowls for my kids. But really, when I think about it now, like, when I was looking at this, I'm like, what a good idea, because then they're not having to fight with the scarf, and, you know, I've had it where my, you know, some scarves are kind of long, and they get caught on things, or they're running, and it's starting to fall off, and it's dragging the ground, and I'm like, oh, a cowl for the kids, it just, like, it makes so much more sense now. <laughs> um, another, a scarf, because there are scarves as well, a scarf I thought really was, was really cool, it's called Wetland. And it has kind of like splashes on it, like splatter looking things. 
and I'm like, it's very, very boy appropriate. I mean, perfect for little girls too. It is double knitting. I attempted double knitting once and it didn't go so good, but I mean, definitely worth giving it another try. I really want to because there's like some really cute patterns out there with double knitting and um, I just, I need to pick it back up and try again. See, that should have been a technique I did for the knit-alongs this year. <laughs> Never even occurred to me. I kind of forget about double knitting sometimes. Um, then there's hand things. Um, there are one set of mittens, but the other three are fingerless mittens. And this is the back hand hitch. And I like these. I'm like, I want these in my size. They have just a really cute cable kind of like knot on the back. Which I think is super cute. And I love the green. I don't know how my boys would do with fingerless mitts. Yeah, the mittens are the mittens are called Dabbler. And I love this little girl's face. She just looks like like I just got into trouble. <laughs> I'm up to something. Super cute. All the kids they found, they got to do these patterns are really, really adorable. Let's see, table of contents. Do, do, do. Sorry, this is taking so long. My poor iPad. It's the first iPad, the original. It just, it's so slow these days. Um, the socks, there's five pairs of socks. These ones are called Blemish, and they have a really unique heel. I wonder if I can make it a little bigger. There, I made the, the picture a little bigger. Maybe you can see the heel. So that looks like something fun to try, something different. It's a heel that, from the looks of it, I haven't, I haven't done. Um, not that I've tried too many heels. And then there was another sock that I really thought looked really cute. Where did it go? Do, 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 do. Oh, these ones. What is it called? Cannon Fire. I thought these were really cute with little circles on them, but they intimidate me because I'm not the strongest color work knitter. But I thought those were cute, very fun, kid, kind of whimsical. They, I mean, I guess they were supposed to be like cannonballs or, you know, cannon fire. Maybe the ring around a cannon as the cannonball comes out. But they look like, like bubbles to me. That's what it reminds me of, bubbles. And then I like that they're short. These look like they're, these are the worsted weight ones, right? Let's see where it says what size. Worked in chunky. Okay. Chunky socks that are like slippers. I thought these were a great idea as well. Because they're easy to get on and off. They're chunky, so they're going to work up super fast. So, overall, I think the patterns in here are really great. Really kid-friendly as they're supposed to be. And, um, I mean, everything in here looks like it'd be simple enough to be able to work it up as a gift. Um, they have some basic, a couple basic scarves as well, um, but I like the variety. I like that it's not all hats or all socks or stuff. I like that it's a little bit of everything. They're very boy and girl friendly, and um, so, like I said, it's called Head to Toe Kids Knit Accessories by Katia Frankel, and... I cannot remember. I will try to look up here real quick and tell you what it retails for. Um, so we're gonna. I'm gonna open up a thread uh, while this is uploading, and so you have to tell me what pattern you would like to knit and who you'd like to knit it for. So um, I know not everybody has kids in their life to knit for. You know, some people don't have nieces or nephews yet, or kids of their own, or you know. Um, so if you end up, you know, saying you want to knit it for charity, that's totally acceptable as well. 
So it retails for $16.95 on Ravelry as an ebook download. And there are 24 patterns. That's less than a dollar a pattern. Like pennies a pattern. So what a good, great deal. I mean, especially like I said, if you have kids to knit for, just it's such a great thing to be like, okay, just pick one because they're all really knitter friendly. I think they'd be great for, you know, a newer knitter as well because I know sometimes when I was first learning to knit, you'd look at something and be like, ooh, I don't know that I can handle that yet. So a huge thank you to Cooperative Press and for Jocelyn who um, contacted me. So um, I will leave the thread open for a week. You get one week. Um, I will close it up um, the Wednesday right before Thanksgiving. Um, so today is the, let me check the date. I think it's the 20th. Yeah, I'm right. Okay, so the 27th. The giveaway will close the 27th at noon because I usually record right after lunch. Um, and you will just contact me, PM me, saying, hey, you know, I'm the winner. And because um, I like you to be surprised. If I don't hear from you within a week, then I will just go ahead and have uh, Jocelyn gift you the ebook, but I really would like you to see that you're the winner and you'll be like, hey, I'm the winner and um, I will have that gifted to you. And like I said, perfect for right before Christmas. Get some Christmas gifts knocked out super fast. I love knitting for kids sometimes because they're little and you can knit it up really fast. As long as you're not doing out of like fingering weight yarn, you're good. <sighs> so that is it for the knitting. So if you're leaving me now, I'll see you later. And if you're sticking around, we're moving into a slice of life. So I talked last week about the graze boxes. And I have to say, I have really enjoyed my graze boxes. And I've been really good about not eating them all in one day. Like, I just want to go and sit down with the box and try them all at first. Like, you open up that box and it kind of goes, oh, I'm full of yumminess. And, um, but I haven't. I've only eaten one a day. And there's only four. So the days that um, I don't have one, I eat, you know, a little Laughing Cow cheese and some crackers and, you know, or something else. And um, love them. Like, so far, out of the first box, there was one that was kind of meh. And out of the second box, there's one that was kind of meh. And I've only eaten half of them, but the ones I have left... I think I'm really gonna like like I really don't have any doubts about it so super super excited about that really enjoying them um, lost 0.9 so just a hair shy away from a pound like woot, woot. <laughs> um, let's see I would really like to lose five what is it 5.1 pounds by the end of the year. I don't know. I'd like to lose another five, but we'll see. It's getting harder. It's getting so, so hard because I know the holidays are coming and every year we bake cookies with the kids. How do you not do that? I mean, I can't be like, because mommy can't sit here and pig out on cookies doesn't mean we, you know, I can be like, so we can't make them. That doesn't fly. That's not fair to them. So it's going to be hard with cookies in the house because sweets are my weakness. Like, I can stay away from chips. I can stay away. It's sweets, for sure. So, um, like I said, the holidays are hard. But, you know, I have to say, I went and I got a haircut Monday. Today's Wednesday. And it was, like, this huge mood lifter. Like, I hadn't had a haircut in, like, five months. And so I went, and she trimmed it up, she styled it, and of course it does not look as good today as when I left the salon. The girl who does my hair is freaking fantastic, and I always feel like a rock star coming out of there, because my hair is all in these big loose curls, and it's just awesome. So, but the awesome thing that she did is I was like, you know, how do I get this look? Because she does a curling iron, she's like, well probably the easiest way for you at home is to get some hot rollers. So I'm like, well I don't... I'm hair challenged. Like, when it really comes to styling it in, like, a real style, like, I can blow dry and get it to look good and whatever, but to style it, style it, I kind of struggle. I can admit it. Um, she's like, look, I'll let you buy, I'll buy, order some hot rollers, what you need. Because I was like, I looked at them at the store and was overwhelmed. They come in a bazillion different sizes. 
She's like, I'll order the size you need at my cost through the salon. She goes, and if you want, we can make an appointment, just a, a wash and style appointment, and um, I'll have you come in and I will teach you how to use them and get the look that you want. I'm like, the heck yeah. Are you kidding me? I, I'm like a client for life now, right? Like, she's gone way above and beyond and... So, totally made my week. I totally have just had, like, this little pep in my step. So, next week, I will, they should be in, and I have my appointment made. And I'm, like, so excited. Because I always wanted, like, the straight, like, the pin straight hair that you could get the real, like, blunt cut bob. And, I, yeah, I don't have that kind of hair. I have now recognized and made peace with my hair is thick and and bushy and it needs layered to lay nice and it is what it is and there's nothing I can do about it without spending a ridiculous amount of money to get it taken care of all the time that I don't have so totally like I said made my week I've had a good week um struggled a little we kind of went out for dinner twice over the weekend and then my great-grandma turned 87 on Sunday. And how do you go to your great-grandma's 87th birthday party and not have cake? You don't, right? You just don't. And I probably had a bit of a too big of a piece. Yeah, I did have too big of a piece. <laughs> um, and like I said, just worried about the holidays. Um, other than that, I'm like, everything's going okay. Like, there have been no bumps in the road, knock on some wood here, because I want to just be able to just glide through the holidays, right? Just easy peasy, lemon squeezy, glide through the holidays. That's all I want. I don't want anything breaking down. I don't want anything flooding. I don't, you know, uh, I just need it. I just need it to stay level for a while. That's it. Just, just get through the holidays. Start the start the year fresh and, and not stressed. <laughs> Fingers crossed, right? Um, so I think that's all I have. I don't have any new food to show. I'm not. I'm having. I'm struggling exercising. Like I think it is cold and I don't want to move. I don't want to go put on exercise clothes and jump around. I just want to curl up with my snuggie and my knitting and stay warm. Yep, that's what I want to do. <sighs> we'll see, right? I'll find motivation somewhere, I hope. <laughs> I'm like, this advent calendar scarf is going to keep my butt parked in the chair an awful lot during December. I still have lots of knitting to do. Other knitting. I want to finish my bonnie. I, I want to knit another sweater to wear for Christmas on Christmas Day. Because the goal is to wear the bonnie Christmas Eve and a sweater Christmas Day. <laughs> yeah, I'm funny, huh? Don't know what I'm getting myself into. But, alright, now I'm just blabbering because I can. So, that's it for me this week. I am Jenna, also known as Retro Lemon. Retro Lemon on Ravelry, Plurk, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, Fitbit, Weight Watchers, and I think that's it. So, until next week, I'll see you then. Bye.